In this video, I'm gonna show you how to test an HTTP server in Node using Jest and SuperTest. And in some future videos, I'm gonna go over more complex details like dependency injection and testing databases and things. But in this video, I'm just gonna cover the basics of testing an HTTP API. I'm gonna be using Jest to test this API and I'm gonna be using test-driven development. And if you need a bit of an introduction to those topics, I'm gonna to include links in the description to videos I've made on those. If we're making an HTTP server in Node using a library like Express, our implementation might look something like this. where we define all of our routes and then set up the Express server to listen on a specific port for HTTP requests. When we use the super test library to test our API, we don't actually wanna bind it to a port ourselves. We wanna let this library actually bind it to whatever port it wants to bind it to, and then super test will actually give us a really nice interface to test the API endpoints. So the project structure for this app will actually look more like this where I've put all of the API code into its own file called app.js. Then we can export the actual server object into a server file. And in the production app, this will run and it will bind it to whatever port we want to bind it to. But for our tests, we can actually create an app, an app.test.js file and import this app into the test and use super test to test all our endpoints in a really nice, easy way. So for this video, I'm gonna test an endpoint that creates a new user. So a user can create a post request with a username and password, and that should end up storing that data into the database. So instead of a get request, this will be post to users, and we won't have any implementation here. So what I wanna do is test this endpoint fully using Jest and SuperTest. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is actually install the development dependencies. That's gonna be Jest and SuperTest. And then in my app.test.js file, I'm gonna import SuperTest. And I'm gonna import the server object from the app.js, because this is the thing we'll be testing. And then before we go any further and actually start testing the endpoint, I wanna specify the things that I actually need to test for this specific endpoint. So I'm using describe blocks here to organize my code a little bit better. I'm gonna have a set of tests for the successful path, which is when I actually provide a username and password to the HTTP server. And then I wanna have some tests for when things go wrong. So if a user tries to sign up and the username is missing or the password is missing, I'm gonna to need to return some sort of error message. So I'm gonna test those separately. So if the user provides a username and password, the server should save the username and password to the database. The database will then return the ID of the user that was just created, and I want the server to respond back to the client with that ID. I wanna make sure that the status code is 200 so that we know it was a successful request. And I wanna make sure that the server responds with JSON in the content type header so that the client actually knows they're receiving JSON data, which can be really important, especially when you're using high-level libraries like Axios on your client to pass the JSON data into an actual JavaScript object. If the client fails to send a username or a password to the server, I just wanna respond with a status code of 400 to represent that there was some sort of user error there. And this is an incomplete implementation because realistically, I'd wanna do things like hash the password before it gets to the database. I would wanna make sure I'm not actually just sending the user ID back to the client as plain text. I'd wanna store it in a session or an encrypted cookie or a JSON web token or something. I would need to handle when the database fails, send back a 500 status code if the connection couldn't be made to the database. But this is sufficient for now just to test the basics of an HTTP server written with Node.js. So I wanna start writing the tests now. And like I said, I'm gonna ignore the database specific things. So that's these two up here for now. I'm gonna to get to those in another video. For now, I just wanna test the parts that have to do with the HTTP interface, which is the status code and the content type. So the first thing I'm gonna test is that if I provide a username and password to the server, it should respond back to me with a 200 status code. 
So we use the super test request function and we can pass in the HTTP server object, which in this case is the app object from Express. And then we're going to say that we want to make a post request to the user's endpoint to create a new user. And I'm just passing in a basic username and password here. And super test is going to take the HTTP server, it's going to bind it to whatever port it wants to bind it to. And then it exposes this nice interface for us. So instead of having to figure out the port and make the HTTP requests ourselves, we just kind of chain whatever request we're trying to make onto the end of the request function and it will just do everything for us. And then we get back this response object that contains all of the details from the HTTP response. And we can use that with the jest expect functions to test certain things, like in this case that the status code is 200. Now I can run this test by running mpx jest, but because I'm using ES modules, I just have to specify a little environment variable first. And this should run the test file and it should time out because my HTTP server isn't actually giving a response back to the client yet. I've just put a bare bones server there. So yeah, it failed because of a timeout. So what I need to do is actually put in uh, some sort of response into my endpoint here. And um, the easiest response to make this test pass would be to say uh, res dot uh, send status 200. So this is now going to make sure it sends back status code of 200 back to the client. So if I rerun the tests here, it's now passing. So if I send a valid username and password, uh, I'm going to get a 200 status code. That is what the test is testing and it's currently passing. So now I actually want to make sure that the server sends back JSON as the content type when there is a successful request. So I'm making the exact same request as before a post request to users with a username and password. And this time I've got an expect to make sure that the content type returned from the server contains, and I'm using this jest expect string containing function here, just to make sure that the string contains JSON somewhere in it to specify this is JSON coming back from the server. So if I run this test, it should fail because I think the default response type from Express is text HTML. Oh, just text plain. Um, so I need it to contain JSON. And the easiest way to do this with an Express app would be to actually send a JavaScript object because Express will then stringify this object and set the content type to be application JSON. So if I run this test again, this should now be passing. There we go. And remember that when we're using TDD, it's really common to make our test pass with the simplest implementation we can possibly think of. So this isn't the production version of the user's endpoint. This is very incomplete. Uh, but that just means that we don't have enough tests yet because every single time we write a test, it is a test that will need to pass when the code is perfect and is the production ready code. It will need to send back a 200 status code. It will need to have a JSON content type. Our code is just very incomplete because we don't have enough tests yet. So we're just gonna build this up gradually using test-driven development. The server is also going to respond with a JSON object that contains the user ID. So the key will be user ID and the value will be the actual ID of the user that just got saved to the database. And I don't want to test the user ID part because that has to do with the database and I want to ignore that for now. I don't want to think about the database right now. But I can write a test to make sure that I do get a JSON object with a user ID and I can just ignore the value for now. So I'm making the exact same request as before and then the response should have a JSON object in its body and I'm going to get the user ID from that JSON object and I'm just going to expect it to be defined. I'm not testing the value, I just want to make sure that a user ID comes back to the client. So this obviously will fail right now, but not because of the test, because I forgot to put async here because these are asynchronous requests. And I was failing because it, I expected it to be defined and it's actually undefined because the server is sending back an empty object. So I can just make this pass by putting in user ID and I'll just put in zero for now, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to make this single test pass while keeping the other tests passing at the same time. And there we go. So I've now got three tests for when things go well and the user sends a username and password. Uh, let's write a test now when things go wrong, if there is no username or no password sent to the server. So I'm now making a very similar request as before, but instead I've deleted the password so it's only sending a username, and then I'm expecting the status code to be 400, which should give me a failing test. Again, failing because I forgot to put async here. Okay, so it expected a 400 status code, but it actually got back 200 status code. So I now need to go back to the server and actually check to see if a password was uh, posted to this endpoint. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm telling Express to allow JSON data to be posted to the server. Uh, then I'm trying to get the password out of the request body. And if there is no password, then I'm gonna send a status code of 400 back to the client. So this should be enough to make this single test pass. There we go. Uh, and now I just need to also write a test for if there's no username passed and potentially if there is no username and no password passed back to the server. And I could write uh, a couple of different test cases here, but this single uh, test function is kind of good enough for these tests because they're all pretty much testing the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is write a couple more requests just in this block to test a missing username and a missing username and a password. So I've just made an array of objects. Uh, one of them has a username but no password, one of them has a password with no username, and one has no username or password. And I'm just gonna loop over that array and send each of those in a post request to users individually and make sure that each time I get a status code of 400. And if I run this right now, it should fail because it will only send a status code of 400 when the password is missing. Uh, so it actually got a 200 for one of those cases. So I just have to go back into app and also check, not an email, also check that a username was passed in here. And this should now pass. So that is, yeah. So, um, so that's the basics of testing an HTTP API in a Node app using Jest and SuperTest. And this was just testing the basics of the HTTP API, but obviously we need to write more tests here. I need to actually test that this data then gets stored into a database and I need to write tests that verify that all of that worked correctly. So I'm gonna cover testing databases using a technique called mocking and another technique called dependency injection in future videos. So stay tuned for those videos.